there is always a sensory receptor number one number two you can see sensory neuron then number three there is an integrating center which can be spinal cord or brain then there is a um, um, last but not the least is the effector which can be a muscle or a gland and it contracts and relieves the stretching now muscle spindles uh, monitor the muscle length and they prevent the over stretching the tearing of muscles how this all uh, is occurring is because number one there is extra fusal muscle fibers at a resting length then there is sensory neuron which is tonically active then spinal cord is integrating the function then alpha motor neuron to extra fusal fibers receiving the tonic input from muscle spindles and the extra fusal fibers maintain a certain level of tension even at rest now we have the dynamic and static stretch reflex the stretch reflex can be divided into two components the dynamic stretch reflex the static stretch reflex the dynamic stretch reflex is elicited by the potent dynamic signal transmitted from the primary sensory endings of the muscle spindles by rapid stretch or unstretch sudden stretch or unstretch of muscle leads to strong signals leading to spinal cord involvement then reflex strong contraction or decrease contraction of the same muscle within seconds the reflex functions to oppose sudden changes in muscle length static stretch reflexes uh, causes the degree of muscle contraction to remain reasonably constant this reflex is elicited by the continuous static receptor signals transmitted by both primary and secondary endings now what is the importance of static stretch reflex it causes the degree of muscle contraction to remain reasonably constant except when the person's nervous system specifically send impulses for voluntary movement now what are the functions of muscle spindle uh, they are important for damping or smoothing action they prevent the oscillation and jerky muscle movement they are important for tone and posture maintenance they stabilize the joints or maintains tone during performance of delicate motor function now the damping mechanism in smoothing the muscle contraction signals from the spinal cord are transmitted to a muscle in an unsmooth form increasing in intensity for a few millisecond then decreasing in intensity then changing to another intensity level when the muscle spindle apparatus is not functioning satisfactorily the muscle contraction is jerky during the course of such signal now the role of muscle spindle in voluntary motor activity when signals from motor uh, from uh, motor cortex or from any other area of the brain alpha motor neurons leading uh, to the stimulation of gamma motor neurons and they are uh, stimulated simultaneously simultaneously an effect called coactivation of alpha and gamma motor neurons this causes both the extrafusal skeletal muscle fibers and the muscle spindle intrafusal muscle fibers to contract at the same time the purpose of contracting the muscle uh, spindle intrafusal fibers at the same time that the large skeletal uh, that the large skeletal muscle fibers contract is twofold first it prevents the length of the receptor portion of the muscle spindle to change during the course of the whole muscle contraction there is coactivation keeps the muscle spindle reflex from opposing the muscle contraction muscle coactivation allows the muscle groups surrounding a joint to become more stable this is due to both muscles or sets of muscles contracting at the same time 
which produces solidity on the joint. The joint is able to become stiffer and more stable due to this action. And it maintains the proper damping function of the muscle spindle regardless of any change in muscle length. Now there is presence of uh, brain areas for control of gamma motor system. The gamma efferent system is excited by signals from the bulbo reticular facilitatory region of the brain stem and by the impulses transmitted into the bulbo reticular area from the cerebellum, the basal ganglia, the cerebral cortex. Gamma efferent mechanism is important for damping the movements of the different body parts during walking and running. It is done by anti-gravity muscles which are rich in muscle spindles. Then, to stabilize the body position during tense action tone, important function of muscle spindle system is to stabilize the body position during tense motor action. The bulbo reticular facilitatory region of the brain stem transmits the excitatory signals through the gamma nerve fibers to the intrafusal muscle fibers of muscle spindles. This shortens the ends of the spindles and stretches the central receptor regions. If the spindles on both sides of each joint are activated at the same time, there is a reflex excitation of the skeletal muscles on both sides of the joint also increases, producing tight, tense muscles opposing each other at the joint. Position of the joint becomes strongly stabilized and any force that tends to move the joint from its current position is opposed by highly sensitized stretch reflexes on both sides of the joint. This aids delicate and exact positioning in performing additional detailed voluntary movements required for complex motor procedures. Now we should be knowing about the clinical applications of stretch reflex. The purpose is to determine how much background excitation or tone the brain is sending to spinal cord to assess the degree of facilitation of spinal cord centers or to determine the sensitivity of the stretch reflexes. Now let's take the example of knee jerk. Striking the patellar tendon with a reflex hammer, there is instantaneous stretch of quadriceps muscle. Exciting a dynamic stretch reflex, the lower leg jerks forward. Then we have the knee jerk and other muscle jerks can be used to assess sensitivity of stretch reflexes. An example of a monosynaptic reflex. Myogram during knee jerk and ankle clonus. Now there is a variation, clinical variation is there in the muscle jerks. When large number of uh, facilita uh, facilitatory impulses are being transmitted from the upper regions of central nervous system into the cord, the muscle jerks are greatly exaggerated. Conversely, if the facilitatory impulses are the resistance of a muscle to stretch is often referred to as its tone or tonus. If the motor nerve to a muscle is cut, the muscle offers very little resistance and is said to be flaccid. Hypertonic or spastic muscle resistance to stretch is high because of hyperactive stretch reflexes. Hypotonic muscles when um, gamma efferent discharge rate is low, then hypertonic muscles when gamma efferent discharge rate is high. Now, what is Golgi tendon reflex and what is muscle, uh, one of the muscle tension receptors? sensory receptor through which muscle tendon fibers pass. They are known as uh, the Golgi tendon reflex. They are about 10 to 15 muscle fibers in each of the Golgi tendon organ 
and is uh, stimulated when this small bundle of muscle fiber is tensed by contracting or stretching the muscle. The difference in excitation of the Golgi tendon organ and the muscle spindle is that the spindle detects muscle length and change in the muscle length whereas the tendon organ detects the muscle tension and changes in it. So we have to learn that muscle spindle is supposed to uh, detect the change in the length whereas the tendon organ is going to detect the change in the muscle tension. You can the tendon organ has both a dynamic response and a static response reacting intensely when the muscle tension suddenly increases. Settling down within a fraction of a second to a lower level of steady sta state firing that is almost directly proportional to muscle tension. Golgi tendon organ provides instantaneous information to CNS on degree of tension in each small segment of each muscle. Transmission of impulses from the tendon organ into the central nervous system. Signals are transmitted through large type 1B rapidly conducting nerve fibers that average 16 micrometer in diameter. These fibers transmit signals both into local areas of the cord and after synapsing in a dorsal horn of the cord through long fiber pathways, spinocerebellar tracts into the cerebellum and the cerebral cortex. Local cord circuit excites inhibitory interneurons, inhibits anterior motor neurons and ultimately inhibiting muscle. Neurons, you can see the neurons from Golgi tendon organ fires, motor neuron is inhibited, muscle relaxes and the load is dropped. Extreme tension on the tendon leading to inhibitory effect leading to a sudden reaction in the spinal cord and ultimately relaxation of the entire muscle. This effect is reaction frequently asked. This reflex is entirely inhibitory, a negative feedback mechanism preventing the development of too much tension on the muscle or you can give it the name of inverse stretch reflex. This is a protective mechanism to prevent the tearing of the muscle or avulsion of the tendon from its attachments to the bone. Now there is a role of the tendon reflex to equalize contractile force among the muscle fibers. Golgi tendon organ equalizes the contractile forces of the separate muscle fibers. Those fibers that exert excess tension become inhibited by the reflex, whereas those that exert too little tension become more excited because of absence of reflex inhibition. This spreads the muscle overload over all the fibers and prevents the damage in isolated areas of a muscle where a small number of fibers might be overloaded. Now, the function of muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs in conjunction with motor control from higher levels of the brain. Dorsal spinocerebellar tracts carry instantaneous information from both the muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs directly to the cerebellum with the uh, velocity of about 120 meters per second, the most rapid conduction anywhere in the brain or spinal cord. Other pathways transmitting information into reticular regions of the brainstem and to the motor areas of cerebral cortex. These information are used for feedback control of motor signals that originate in all these areas. This is all about what are the muscle receptors, what are the, what are the uh, what is the term of muscle tone, what is classification of reflexes, what are different uh, muscle sensory receptors, what is uh, static response, what is dynamic response. So thank you very much for today's session. 
may god bless you